All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Origami Season, Season 2, two episode, episode 4. Hachiman. Ooh. Aren't things just spicing up for you? Yeah, this oh, is uh, boy. This is a whole ordeal right here. Yeah. This is a whole cake. This is a massive, massive entire enchilada. Yeah. Because you've got a girl from your past, the girl from your past. Mm -hmm. Coming back into your life, chance encounter, of course. I'm sure you'll never, never see her again. But then there's also but, all the conversations uh, with pretty much everyone else in your life. Yeah, yeah. And you are wax on, wax off. Good luck, buddy. Uh, Hiratsuka Sensei was yeah. fantastic as well. We mm -hmm. got a lot of stuff with Haruno. We got yep. a lot of stuff with just the rest of the service club. So. Mm -hmm. Let's hope that at the very least here, this is something where we'll keep these conversations going and yeah. he's not going to get isolated. That's, that's right. the number one priority here. But you're doing now. a great job of isolating yourself so far, Hachiman. Keeping things the same. Yep. All right. So, y'all, oh without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone. Now be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below. Then come back here for the discussion. All right, guys. Okay. Well, this was a doozy of an episode, and yeah. we have some new found serious respect for Hayama Hayato here. Uh huh. Holy he crap. He was MVP. kind of a badass this episode, and yeah, I, yeah. I'll just come out and say it. I did not track completely with all the implications of what was going on. Yeah, but there's a couple ways that this all spiderweb connects together uh -huh. with regards to how. Like Everyone Harano's. ended up in the same place. Right, and exactly. Why. Yeah, the stuff with Hayama, I feel like, is the most straightforward, and I really like that they brought that up, because the relationship dynamic between Hayama and Hachiman mm -hmm. has been rocky recently, to say the least, right? It's been a little bit, it's been a little bit undefined as well. There's yes. a couple things that we've sensed from Hayama that shows his care and appreciation for Hachiman but in, but not exactly the reasons why. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and the way that the way that he explained it of hey, I wanted to fix what I broke. Right. That's fantastic because because Hayama was always the one that would put the you know put his his foot forward first in trying to establish a connection with Hachiman, right? Mm -hmm. And Hachiman didn't really care too much for it, right? But now that they ended up being, you know, in a, in a tense situation, and then he mm -hmm. relied on Hachiman when they clearly weren't friends or talking to each other or anything, and then as a result of that, everything happened with Yukino and Yui. Right. So yeah. let's 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 actually like draw things out a little bit here because I think actually for me Hayama Hayato's stuff here that he did is the least like easy for me to understand. Oh, okay. So what Hayama did was impulsive. He did not plan everything perfectly so that Haruno would show up at this specific time and that the girls would show up at this specific time. This seemed like something to me where he had a design mm -hmm. that he would spend time with Hachiman here and he chose Hachiman specifically because of the fact that he has a desire to connect with him and that the girl, uh, uh -huh. Orimoto Kaori, is one that he heard from Haruno was someone that he, he previously liked, liked at some point. So am I? Am I? Am I, I where you're at thus far? Yeah, I, I, that's or that is that is what I was assuming it was from the beginning. I I want to leave open the possibility that he did plan to do to do things this way from the get go, and that's why it was so important to like reschedule to make sure that Hachiman was there and things like that. Because if he's if he well, was okay, but that still doesn't necessarily have anything to do with whether or not they would show up it's about whether or not he would actually go on this date thing well uh potentially but the yeah. the main the main reason why i'm wondering if that's the case is that if his objective because the the t the telling off of the two girls in the cafe i feel like that was a more like spur of the moment kind of he just couldn't handle it anymore right right and and from that sense it also would make sense if Calling Yukino and Yui there was also, or just texting them at some or point texting them the or, or whatever, or anything. right? And being like, "Hey, let's meet up at this place. I, you know, want to talk to you guys about the the whole situation, right? right. The, the election. Um, that that would make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if if the if his objective from the beginning was to fix what he broke in the relationship between Yukino and Yui and Hachiman. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how having Hachiman here with these two girls would 
help with that if he didn't know that they were going to respond to him in this way. Right. And I so, would say that it's not a it's not a strong uh, definitive thing that they would mm-hmm. need to respond in this specific way in order for that result to come about. So I think that sure. that's where, okay. if anything, him speaking out like this was 100% impulsive. We can we can okay. be we can be certain on that, right? Uh-huh. Like, uh huh. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I believe okay. so. Yeah. So then the part that's still undetermined is whether or not Yukino and Yui showing up was somewhat planned. Now, Haruno knew about this hangout, which is. Which, curious. which is curious. I would say that that means that she might have been maybe a part of this in some way. Somehow, yeah. But the fact that she knows maybe shows that she's either playing a bit too much of the kind of I'm going around and gossiping and getting a whole bunch of data behind everyone's back. So she's either going directly to the the high school girls, uh, mm-hmm. Kaori and uh, Chika, or, or she's pressuring... Hayato a little bit in some ways where he's telling her this info. Regardless, Mm -hmm. the fact that she was there led to a very awkward thing with uh, her and Yukino. Right, and I'm not sure how gigabrain Haruno's being here because she is definitely the most socially, like, like, apt or... Yeah, well, if inept is a word, I'm, I'm sure. She, yeah, she doesn't need to be gigabrain in order to just know that if she takes the student council president role, then the club's going to fall apart. Right. She and doesn't then, need to be a genius to oh understand no, that. Right, right. And then the question yeah. is, is what does that change? Because I feel Her like... Her and Hachiman can't get together, really. It'll but push them away from each other. But I feel like she's actually... She thinks she's rooting for them? I think she's rooting for them. Like unless oh, okay. because because she's constantly saying, like, hey, you know, you and you and Yukino, you know, and, and that whole thing. And maybe it's something mm. where that's actually like sarcasm, who knows, right? Okay. But I feel like she's I feel like she's trying to help in her own way, but she she also let's you know, her and Hachiman have those let's similarities. Go the episode. Of, let's go through the episode now, because I'm I'm okay. starting to lose track a little bit with the the, the flow of the mm-hmm. story. But finishing what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, that, go for it. Go for that, it. Um her and Hachiman share similarities in, in that when she's dealing with Yukino, she will often do things for Yukino's own good that put her in a bad light, right? That make her be the, yes. the villain, et cetera, yes, for her she's sister. Like Hachiman. Right. Yeah, yeah. Or Hachiman is like her. Right. And so, so potentially this could this could be what she was trying to do here. Yeah. So um, Hayama needs him to come with him here for this bit here when he invites him. And uh, he's like, I need your help, basically. Think of it as helping me out. Right. And he's like, I don't need your help. I'd like to chill at home on the weekends. He's like, oh, is that so? And then Yui and Hina notice that. And Hina with mm-hmm. her little, like, BL, like, stuff. Yeah. And then he just contacts Komachi. <laughs> no, no, no. Haruno contacts oh, Komachi. Oh, that's right. Yes. This is the part that's weird for me, is that how did she find out to then go directly to the sister Oh, and maybe. ask that Oh, way? wait. Oh, no, hold on. This is probably way simpler. Hayama is basically like, hey, Haruno. I am not able to get Hachiman to agree to this. Oh, so I know you good. can work your magic. So can you do this for me? And oh, and yeah. if and so That's if so really so okay, so here's for it. And and here's my here's my tracking of the motivations for this. Mm-hmm. Haruno wants the relationship to be patched up with Yukino and Hachiman. The way things are right now, it's not working. If it's something where then she pushes Yukino to go and try and, try and become the, the president, right? Mm-hmm. That's going to change the dynamic within the club, which will force Hachiman to move, you know, because Adjust. it's the it's the ultimatum, right? Because because otherwise things will definitely be, be changed. Mm-hmm. Hayama is wanting to mend the relationship between Hachiman and Yukino and Yui, right? Right, because so, he feels responsible for breaking. Exactly, yeah. which means that the two of them, Hayama and Haruno, have similar objectives, right? Uh, so it would make sure. sense that he would be able to get her to work with him, right? Okay, because I'm tracking with et cetera, this. Et cetera, yeah. et cetera, right? Yeah. So he contacts her to be like, hey, get Hachiman to do the thing. She does it, right? She goes through mm-hmm. Kamachi. I love that Kamachi is now just the understood. For those in the know, she is the way to... to contact and or influence Hachiman. Yeah. It's great. They go on the I dates, love, I love her. Yeah. the double date, and of course it's how... Anything but. 
It's, it's horrible. Right. It's, it's as would yeah. be expected, right? However, we get a little bit in the middle of the movie where Hashimon yes. kind of comes to terms with a specific thing. And I, I really like that he did this because this reminds me of something from my past. Mm. There was a time when I basically had that crush on the super nice girl, but in the uh. like overtly, um, not flirtatious, but I would say kind of just really large energy and boisterously tries to make everyone feel like they're the best person in the world and puts on a very strong act with regards to that. Mm -hmm. But when you're younger and immature, you could see that and you don't know in the context that they do this for everyone. Right. And when you and this person are alone and they're doing that with you and there's right. no one else to impress, basically, you're like, it can mess with your head. You're like, wait mm -hmm. a minute. Because they're they're doing a good job. They're making you feel special. Yes. Yeah. And uh -huh when you then reciprocate back, they then magnify it back to you because that's the way they do things. Uh -huh. I then ended up crushing on this girl for so long, but because she ended up basically being this kind of person to so many other people, I got confused as to whether or not she ever really had any interest in me at all, which I eventually learned later she, she didn't. She didn't at mm -hmm. all. It was just a general, just, you know, yeah. uh, very uh, charismatic kind of person in general. And... When I found that out, it was this really big like, oh, right. Just because someone treats you a way that you would consider to be sure X, Y, Z, that doesn't mm. mean that that's the way that they're intending it to be or what yep. they're actually thinking or feeling. Thus, having more, I would say, boring but back and forth communication when you like someone regarding like, hey, this is exactly the way I feel about you, yada, 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 mm -hmm. uh, became basically the way that I did relationships from then on out with regards to romantic oh, uh -huh. relationships. And I liked it way more. Just because to make it simple and... It made things way simpler. It mm -hmm. made things very quick to get rejections. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> and then they, they couldn't sting as much because it yeah. wasn't this big build-up thing. Yeah. But it was kind of an avoidance uh, along the idea of potentially getting infatuated with someone. Ah, uh, keeping yourself yeah. from actually getting too attached yeah it, mm -hmm. it, exactly exactly and uh the point then that hayama says later mm -hmm. in this same well not the same scene in the cafe scene it's like we've never been in love oh and that was one of the things that i think i realized around Wait the time a minute. as well so, oh. so yeah let's 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 okay. transition into so the you cafe think scene. that that was the situation with hayama and harano maybe uh-huh and the, and it's the oh no yeah, I'm boring because it actually got exactly. confirmed. Apparently, yep. he basically said, "I'm the boring one." Right? right. Uh -huh. She finds me boring, which is not like necessarily what I would expect. Does everything expected. right, basically. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, quickly, um, e Ebina, Ebina, and uh, and, and Hina uh, saw them hanging out. Well, no, no, uh, it's Ebina and Hina are the same person. It's um, oh, uh, sorry, it's sorry. freaking com no. Uh, where is it? Where is her name here? It's her name. Was it Yumiko? Yumiko, yeah, 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 that's yeah, right. yeah, yeah Yumiko, because uh -huh. it's almost here. She is here. Yeah, she there is we Yumiko. go. We put her at the bottom. <laughs> <sighs> but um, yeah, Yumiko and uh, Hina saw yeah. this whole thing, and yep. it did cause a little bit of a. Mm -hmm. uh, and she almost rolled her ankle. It's like yikes. Yeah. Yow, and then yow, huh, yow. Un unexpected panties, pink. Okay. <laughs> it's like all right, let's 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 go. Yep. Mm -hmm. And now, just he, everybody was here all at the same time. Basically. Yeah, now they kind of did an awkward just, oh, suddenly we're in a different place. But mm -hmm. then they also had other people bump into them here. Yep. But this was kind of the, hey, 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 just let this happen. This is for the maximum drama effect. We need to have all the characters show up at least once in this episode. But when, what was his name? Tobechi? Uh, uh, yeah, Tobechi. Yes. I, I believe that's right. Yes. Um, yes, yes, yes. Yes. But um, when he and uh, Iroha... Mm -hmm. uh, show up she she She's shows like, her true self apparently uh -huh. now this was such a like a kind of a closed off scene in terms of the episode right. as a whole with the high it felt like a random mind. encounter kind of a thing yeah right, right. the emerald on the encounter table mm -hmm. but the out having fun getting translated into you've got some balls to be goofing off with chicks while you've got work to do like I don't think he's entirely wrong here in his no. reading between the lines. No, I think he's totally right. Yeah. She got creepy, yo. Uh huh. Yep. Yep. And then and like, then Hayama was oh. like, Oh, you she's showing you her real self. And it's like, okay. But that is something that is kind of interesting mm -hmm. because to parallel things, yes. she is showing him her real self 
and it's nasty. It's right. It's it's scary. Yeah, and and you could say that the other girls that they're with are also sort of showing their real selves, and it's nasty. But it's it's very much this veneer that they're putting up. And she is putting up a veneer too, but it's very much like a read between the lines, you know. Um, well, right, but well, she's also physically keeping others at a distance as to what she's saying, so therefore she doesn't have to put on as much of a mask with what she whispers to him here. Yeah, yeah, So exactly. it makes it extra creepy in that she's whispering to him. Uh-huh. She's whispering to him while he's in a group of people, meaning yeah. that she doesn't care about anyone else right yep. now. Well, in that, it, yeah, it is one of those things where it also made me wonder, like, okay, you know, you've mm. got these two girls, you know, that are like, oh, yeah, you know... Hachiman, he's awful, all that stuff, right? Putting him down. And then randomly, like, every single person that they run into has an express interest in Hachiman. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But also, this is someone that I I very much personally, mm-hmm. I, it, it, um, uh, it rubs me the wrong way. I don't mm. hate it, but this is something, a behavior of sorts dislike. that is extremely manipulative. Oh, well. Well, yes, yeah. yes. I but, mean, this is the show where it's all about the little manipulations that everyone does in just their daily and, social life. Exactly. But this is one that's so overt that it 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 it, it angers me in a. It, it's a the audacity. That's that's the response. Basically, <laughs> the audacity of this bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To basically come in, uh-huh. give very creepily kind of a sequestered one-on-one thing that kind mm-hmm. of pushes everyone else oh, yeah. away from Hachiman. It straight up gives me like SAO abridged Asuna vibes. Like <laughs> <laughs> Okay, not as many people are gonna get that reference. Okay. I, I appreciate it. But yeah. the the idea is that it it, it seems extremely uh, possessive mm-hmm. and saying that this person does not believe in them getting consequences for their actions. Sure. Yeah. And personally my consequence for the actions would be um sorry, step off. Uh, we're having some time together right now, hmm. and you're being really rude right now. So ah, I, I just now now just just for curiosity's sake, yeah. how much of that is the um, is the would I really do this or is that, yeah is, is the, no no actually I would I would I would come very gotcha. close to doing that because there's a couple okay. times where I've been in situations where I am in a position where family does this. Oh, wow. and this is where you know that uh-huh. this would rub you the wrong way too when they do this. Family basically steps well, in. With family, it's always fun because if if that happens, then you can um, you can drop pretenses. Well, you know? that's the thing. Though. <laughs> like, I'd say with a lot of people, they can't drop pretenses. No oh yeah, what kind of like what you're saying? Like, mm-hmm. are you sure you would really do that? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I've done this with family, mm-hmm. and I've actually done this with, with people with other people. Yeah, and it is so freeing to basically do the equivalent of what Hayama did here this episode, mm-hmm. but to people who do this kind of stuff. Oh, and the, the times where it's it's really tough though is when people have this like, but I'm doing something I'm completely innocent here. I mm. can't be I can't have any kind of negative consequences for this. Right. My intentions are pure. <laughs> it doesn't matter, honey. It doesn't yeah. matter. It's the whole it's the whole free will. Free will. Free will. You know. Like, <laughs> yeah. But I gotta say, Tamechi, well done, well done. Mm-hmm. Just segueing her out of there. Yep. Really quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and forget like, that place is mainly for baseball gear anyway. Yeah, like the way the way her demeanor like totally shifted after he like like segued well, them out. Well, we never see her face again. So, no, no, I know. But so when when demeanor. he's like, "Hey, let's hit up this place," and then she's like, "That place is mainly for baseball." Like you know, it it drops to like the oh oh right 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 yeah. yes yes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's the it's the oh you put forth an idea right. into the conversation, then it's uh-huh. the shooting it down immediately. Like, right, it's, right. it's very cold. It doesn't it have the same kind of million-watt smile or whatever. Yep, yep, yeah. exactly, uh-huh. exactly. Yeah. So, oh, that was good, that was good. Good catch, yeah. Because <sighs> I was I was misinterpreting that line just there, too. Mm-hmm. Well done, okay. Okay, so, yeah. true self, because she doesn't want me to... To, <laughs> to love her. her, yeah, it's like, oh, that's it. I mean, mm. it's, it's an astute and... 98% chance accurate observation. Yeah. Okay. Now, Hachiman's type. He mentions that there was a noisier girl, a more silent girl. Yeah. Different as can be. And yeah, yet I still, still fell. fell. Still thought they were my type. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So it wasn't... So this... Or- Orimoto might be the, the most extreme example for Hachiman, 
but uh, was not the only instance. It wasn't right. a it wasn't a one and now I'm burned forever, right? Right. It was a that maybe set the pattern so that he would see it. And sure. Then and we don't know whether it's first or second or right. Like exactly. That. Yep. I liked this little bit with the uh, the skis here, just to show the idea of different color styles and preference. Basically. I believe those might be snowboards. Uh, it's it's just a size thing. Oh, okay. But, but yeah, it, it, they t totally could be snowboards. The point mm -hmm. is that they're snow gear. Right. And that. They're all different ones, but they're lined up in a row, just talking about it being oh. his preference, uh -huh. basically, for something. And besides, just because it was the case in the past doesn't mean it's still the same. And then Hayama just kind of goes, yeah, you're right. And then in the end, I guess we've never really fallen in love. So, I mean... Neither, Neither nor you nor, nor I. I. The fact that he says that kind uh -huh. of presumptuously, yeah. Hachiman does not... Nope. Does not debate it. Does not it. press it. And I... So... I'm just going to say, until we get evidence to the contrary, mm -hmm. I'm just, it's confirmed in my mind that Hayama once was, um, well, let's just say, uh, yes, a selfish infatuation that was all a misconception mm. with Harano. Yeah. So. Yeah. Again, I, I forgot about mm -hmm. Yumiko here, but why could be Yumiko as well? The blonde girl. Uh, yes, that is true. Mm -hmm. That is yeah. true, but I, I get the feeling that's that's maybe also one of the things of why Yumiko can't get his attention, mm. because she's never actually been able to get his attention because he's not able to fall in love anymore. Right, it's the thing of the he, <sighs> or or rather he knows he knows that it's shallow kind of a thing, right? Uh, so it's the, yeah, you know, it, it's it's hard for him to respect her probably, or, or to turn it into something where he doesn't know because I think mm -hmm. he does know that it's very low likelihood mm -hmm. that it's love. Yeah is that he doesn't know if he can tell whether or not it's love. Sure. So like if, if it ends up being something mm -hmm. that's, yep. you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, also, the way that um, th this adds so much additional context to the way that he talks about Harano, because, yes. one, there's this element of almost jealousy when he mentions how, hey, she she, she pays attention, she, she treats you, right? You know, mm -hmm. she doesn't, she treats you like, a, like an actual person, right? Mm -hmm. Something where um, then we find out that, oh, apparently he was boring and ignored. That's not mm -hmm. something that I would suspect to have a lot of emotion, to give a lot of emotion to that past experience. Unless, well, actually, you know, now that you mention it, in a lot of ways, yeah. being ignored in some cases is worse than being hated mm -hmm. by the person that, you know, you think very highly of. Yeah, because it's there's nothing you can do with that, right? If if yep. they hate you, then at least you can try and address that and be like, "Hey, you shouldn't hate me," kind of mm -hmm. a thing. But if they completely <sighs> ignore you, what do you do with that? Yeah, there was a point when I was talking with someone who I, I this is one of those guys. You ever wonder? You ever meet one of those people that's mm -hmm. your peer in age? Okay, but they're like twenty years older than you in wisdom. Like. Like just someone you can't you can't fathom, but you just for some reason you have so much respect for every word that comes out of their mouth because they uh -huh. just seem so wise. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. So there's this guy I knew, and any chance I could get to basically like poke his brain about relationships, just just life in general, just all kinds of stuff, I would ask him. He's probably about two years older than me, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe, maybe a little more, but he's a peer essentially. And one of the things that I asked him about was basically how you. Uh, end up interacting with the people and stuff who are just constantly basically getting on your nerves, but you have to do life with them. Uh, so like work, you know, associates and stuff sure. like that. Mm -hmm. So like you have a boss that you just hate or something mm -hmm. like that. You just can't stand them and stuff. And this guy would constantly have these like really clever ways of basically turning everything around into some way that you could end up basically just being reminded that they're human and stuff, right? Now, where I'm going with this basically is a little bit, a little bit weird, but the idea of ignoring someone mm -hmm. is something that he never recommended, ever, okay. ever, and it fascinated me because oftentimes when I was basically taught in general that you had someone who was being a problem in your life, just basically, ignore in some them. Way, yeah. yeah, you just ignore them. Mm -hmm. This guy never recommended that, and huh. I remember asking okay. him at some point, "Why do you like?" Why do you always assume that it's best to take some kind of an active role in this mm -hmm. than just kind of distance yourself? And he's like, well, you yourself said they have to be in your life, right? And I was like, oh. Oh. And he's like, then why not? Why wouldn't you take an active role? And it was just like this thing of like, 
Like even this if the whole it, thing flipped even on its head. The, even if the active part was to actively remove them from your life. Sure. That was that was the thing. The idea of the apathy and just anything along those it's lines. It's just the worst. That is the worst thing. You do not do that. And there were so many like little things that I was like, mm-hmm. I, I, uh, uh, I I'm mean, seeing the apathy pop up in my life and being like, oh my god, I, I use it there, I use it there, I use it there. Like oh, apathy. Whoa. Apathy is awful. Like there, <laughs> there, uh, there was a a book I read by this like psychologist that was basically mm-hmm. saying like for like uh like clinical type stuff right uh-huh. with helping people and whatnot he ordered the the emotions right oh, okay. from from like neutral to positive to negative right okay and the uh apathy was the second worst <laughs> the second worst that there was wow. the only thing worse than that was um like uh, shame oh shame yeah huh. yeah i think i huh. think despair was despair was um Above, is, was the next one above apathy? Yeah, I'm not despair. Sure. I don't even know how you'd quantify that as an emotion. It's a little well, bit, well, because the idea. I think. I think the idea was that if if you're, yeah, yeah, despairing seems more like a a thing that you're doing. Yeah. But that even with that, it's because there is sort of a, a a knowledge or an awareness or a hope that things could be different, right? Sure. And that's why you hate that things are the way they are, right? Gotcha. Whereas you know, with apathy, then it's you feel nothing about it. So there's it's. It's really hard to work with, and then with with of course shame. Then it's the you it's, twist it. It's you, you yeah. twist it. So then then it's you yourself, not mm-hmm. the the environment or the circumstances you don't you're know dealing with. Problem, with. right? Yeah. But um, yeah. So I totally am am all for the apathy being being just just the worst. It, yeah. It is awful, awful, awful. Yeah. And this guy was like 27, 28 or something. Mm-hmm. So this was you know a few years ago and stuff yeah. like that. And yet I just remember being like, yeah, yeah. I don't know why, mm-hmm. but something in the way you're saying that, that not taking an active role in people that have to be in your life in some way is just the worst thing. So the way in which we have a lot of these kids here, uh-huh. which are kids, remind you. Right. Now, some you're of them, adults, like Harno, but, you know. Harno might be an adult, but mm-hmm. some of them are trying to basically figure out ways to take selectively active roles in certain people's lives, sure. depending on where yeah. their energy is at during the day or the mm-hmm. week or whatever. Mm-hmm. And we can see where it's causing problems when they start to get apathetic in right. certain areas. So, so then, yeah. Okay, so do we want to talk any more about the whole idea of that whole potential Hayama Haruno dynamic or whatever? Not with Haruno. Okay. I think we need to talk about it just from the stance of what he did here. Yeah, in the cafe. Because that... Because he is standing up for... He's standing up Hachiman for Hachiman in a way that no one in this show thus far has done. Well, no, we no, we have had people stand up for him. That was actually something in the first episode of season two. That okay. Was, yes, but not mm. in public, not in this way. What was the way that you're thinking of? Well, there was when, um, uh, when the in in the first episode of season two, when they uh, came in to ask for help and they wanted Hachiman's help, but they were being really like. Um, oh. it was, I, I believe it was Tobe. He was asking. He was coming in to ask for Hachiman's help. That is true. And they were they were being really like he was being really like you know just oh, talking down to, that was Yukino, to Hachiman. Right. And then and then Yukino is like, hold up, you know, and told them where they could get off. And Hachiman, no, sorry, Hayama noticed this. Uh huh. And that's the thing that I think is so big about this is because Hayama was the person who would do that before, right? He would stand up for Hachiman because he wanted to be friends with Hachiman, right? So he was actively putting in that effort. But recently, because things have been very much, you know, on the outs for the that, two of them, that is a good he hasn't yeah. been doing that. He was present in that instance, and mm-hmm. Yukino had to be the one to stand up for Hachiman, right? Right, yeah. So he's doing it here, which, one, is fantastic because he's showing that, hey, you know what, Hachiman, even if you don't want things to change, I want things to change, mm-hmm. right? So he's actually putting putting that uh, that uh, the the relationship with Hachiman into priority, right? And and he's doing that here. And I love that it's something where he's even he's even compromising his own ideals and whatnot, yeah. and doing things the way Hachiman would do it. And he said afterward, "I would never want to do that again." Yeah, right. Like I it's love not that. Who he is? It's not who he is, right? Yeah. And it, it's it, or it's not what he's done. He has no pattern built up of that. So it yeah, feels so but it's alien. It, to it him. feels alien, but at the same time, he's acknowledging its effectiveness, right? Mm-hmm. He is basically meeting Hachiman where he was at, right? You know, and saying that I don't like. I know there's a lot that you hate about me just because of the kind of archetype that I represent, you right. know. Yeah. But I'm even though I don't I will not make a habit of doing this I am capable and of willing to do it for you and willing to do it for you even if it's just this once you Let's know be bros bro you yeah know, but mm-hmm. 
And then there's the uh, whole thing, the 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 icing on the cake of Yui and Yui and Yukino coming there. in, and it like that oh was just my like, gosh. oh, what? Yeah. What? Like, I have never felt more proud uh -huh. of probably any of the characters in this show thus far than this moment. This this, was, this one is definitely this one way is up, up there. there. This yeah. one is uh -huh. up there. Yeah. Like the fact that they both apologized and were like, okay, we're leaving. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's about what I would expect at yep. the most, which is the, mm -hmm. we're not going to exacerbate the issue. Right. They we basically, clearly understand that we were in the wrong, but we're not going to try and, you know, well, uh, well I, ownership, you, take ownership that much of it. Uh -huh. We're going to run away because, well, right. we're outnumbered. I don't, yeah, I, I almost don't even think that the idea of them being in the wrong even crossed their minds. It's the, it's the, they they have been acknowledging this entire time that Hayama is in the, is their social superior, so to yes. speak, right? Mm -hmm. That's why they hang on his every word. They're constantly like yep. trying to be close to him, yep. you know, saying that anything he says, oh, it's it's a great idea, all yep. that stuff. And then also putting Hachiman down, down. to basically yep. try and make that difference mm -hmm. be even greater to see how special they are treating him, right? To make yeah. that obvious, right? Yeah. And it's, then yeah. And then he basically just does this and all of a sudden they're in a very awkward situation. They're like, they're not even really apologizing to Hachiman. They're apologizing to Hayama because they're like, "We are sorry that we have that we have displeased you." And then, and then they leave, right? Yep. And that's it, right? Yep. And oh man, that oh, was so good. That I was vindicating. I, I will just say that moment got me like really emotional in some ways, not because of what Hayama was doing, mm -hmm. but because I was realizing how often. People do what is, in my opinion, one of the most like casually accepted worst forms of this, oh, which is uh -huh. just gossip. But this is even worse because they're doing it with the person present, and there are people sitting by Hayama in this case doing nothing about it. Mm -hmm. So when he stands up and does something about it, you realize how much it kills all yep. the potential mm -hmm. connection that was ha happening here. What I've seen happen so often is someone mm -hmm. is basically accepting the role of the, uh, what, what would this be? Um, the pariah, but the, the, the... Yeah, what's the, the heel. The, the heel. Yeah, the heel. The heel is more of like the, like the, they're doing it negative to get that kind of thing. Oh, okay. Like this is someone who's the, oh, I guess the heel works because it's like the butt end of the joke. Basically. Right, right. Yeah. 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 And... When they're doing this, they're so used to this mm -hmm. that when someone who's a little bit new to the group kind of is like, like hey, what the hell is on. this? Yeah. They quickly jump in and go, oh, no, no, it's, no, no, it's no. all good. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Because they like the fact that the connection exists despite it being in this uh -huh. maybe unhealthy way. Yeah. Now, far be it from anyone to judge kind of how a group dynamic yep, works. It's all about like where each person within the group is at and making sure that everyone's okay with it exactly the, where they the know place. their value they know what they need exactly. and want and 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 that's the that's the that's the tough balance to keep is that mm -hmm. it's not always easy to tell if the person who is in that situation is okay okay with it, it feels comfortable with it and stuff etc especially if you bring it up in a public setting where they could end up being outnumbered by the people that are okay with right. it and, and, and is, they don't have a trust with the other people that might join in on it right yeah and, and this is something that i've seen that's very very unsettling just to me personally mm -hmm. there was a time when i had a roommate that basically was what what these girls were doing oh uh-huh and the thing was is that he was more socially like um, dynamic in groups and stuff like that to where I wasn't able to kind of squeeze my way out of a lot of these situations mm -hmm. unless unless there were enough strangers in the social d conversation dynamic that I could then escape to them. But the more and uh. more he gathered friends, the more and more he brought people into the accepting thing of the way he did things, the less they would seem to be safe places for me gotcha because it was all sort of his social territory exactly mm -hmm. so it felt like the equivalent of me trying to avoid a urinating alpha wolf going uh -huh. around and basically being like no 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 they're mine too no uh -huh. no, no they're yeah. mine too to where there was a point basically where i just stopped hanging out with him and the friends that were my friends too Mm -hmm. But because I was so frustrated with the whole thing, I just I just stopped hanging out with him. 
then the friends got upset with me because they felt like that I was oh, ignoring them. Gotcha. To the point where they oh, ended that's... up calling me out on it in a dynamic where the guy was there gotcha. and enough strangers were there to where I just let him have it in front of the whole group, doubling down the whole thing of, yeah, what's wrong with you, dude? What's what's wrong with you? And the people that I thought huh. were my friends basically at the time kind of did the... Well, you're acting weird in a group right now. So yeah, this is not rather, socially acceptable. Right. Rather mm-hmm. than the fact of getting into why you're acting this way, we kind of have to call it off because this is really like awkward. We want you to stop this strange behavior that is disrupting the balance. Exactly. Yeah. You're you're mm-hmm. ruining the thing there. So mm-hmm. because there were more of them, it didn't end up going that way in this situation. Right. Because, yeah, the reason, because the thing is, is that if Hachiman, and it, this is the, mm-hmm. like, I love how it was that's brought why he up. brought the girls in. Right. That's why he brought the girls in yeah. to, to help to help cement the point. Yeah. He didn't. In his situation, he didn't need them because Maybe, because they hold him know. in high enough regard. But if it wasn't him, if it was someone like Hachiman, for instance, he would be dependent on Yukino and Yui coming in. Yeah. So that that way he's got the numbers. It's not just the one weirdo who's who's saying something like that, right? Yeah. It is the worst feeling when the group basically looks at you and just goes, <sighs> and then yeah. turns away. It is. It is killer it is mm-hmm. absolutely killer so like my heart goes out immediately to anyone that's in those situations and i like always try and stand up with the person that gets that mm-hmm. kind of that kind uh-huh. of situation thrown on them there so i i just got emotional just feeling out for uh, for hachiman in this in this setup yep. here as it just continued on and on and but, on and but the fact that he actually did something here he actually did it oh. but then at the same time hachiman's response yeah because, yeah. <sighs> like, he's shocked first. Yeah, he's totally shocked. Right. And he's and, kind of just observing. and Uh-huh. Like, and weirdly enough, because of Harano intervening. <laughs> true. Like. It kind of delays his response or it something. It kind of delays his response, and it also potentially sabotages. It's, um, it doesn't help his relationship with Hayama. Right? It uh, doesn't, right? It doesn't do any favors there, right? Because, yeah. because. Hachiman is a very stubborn character, right? Mm-hmm. So ideally, they, they, you know, after they talk about it and he tells him what the situation is, ideally then it could be like, okay, there could be, be some reconciliation. But Hachiman still has a bunch of things that are just, I don't know, that are, that are unsettled within himself. Mm-hmm. And Haruno coming in is kind of the, all right, now I will take action to manipulate my sister in the way that I know will work by basically you know, doing things that will make her think that I will not be manipulated by my sister by doing this thing, but I already knew that that <laughs> yes. was going to make you do the thing, you know? Right. So, yeah. 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 Huh. I, I, I really love the role that Haruno has in this story. Oh, yes. Like, absolutely. Like, one of the things... I hate her and love her. Yeah. She is a sewing mm-hmm. needle. She yep. is connecting things, mm-hmm. like, with pain and precision. And... It, it it works. Yep. And it is something where I, I can't wait to kind of have the the other shoe drop from her perspective of things mm. to where it doesn't work maybe as well. And we get a sure. little bit of understanding as to what led her to this um to this place in general. Yeah. But okay, the girls were there because mm-hmm. Hayama, Hayama set them up to do yep. something else, but they weren't, so they were ending up being used mm. in this way. And that is something that has a very high likelihood of being set up entirely with Haruno and Hayama, right? Uh, That's what you were talking about, that Hayama set them up basically to come in here to this specific cafe so that uh, right. when he needs to basically... Well, I think... or So I think uh, he got Haruno to get Hachiman there. Yeah. By getting her to get Hachiman there, she figured out what was going on and then inserted herself into the situation yeah, I'm so she could also the, do her I'm talking objective. about the girls, Yui and Yukio. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So then they were they were brought here by... By Hayama. Yes, yeah, right. okay. That, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I was saying, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. Okay, so then when uh, when the girls leave, Yui and Yukino, mm-hmm. Hachiman kind of has the whole thing of like, wow, mm-hmm. okay, that was a bit... Overboard. Over the, over I the have top. a sister, but damn. Why do you need to antagonize her like that? Uh-huh. And she's like, oh, you think that was overboard? 
Like, like, yeah. like, oh, you're, you're the person saying that I'm doing this too much? Right. It's like, mm. what, what have, what have you been doing? You know, like. Yeah, that, that, that seemed rather interesting the way that she kind of like, oh, you can see through everything, huh? Yeah. Like. Uh-huh. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Ugh. Always trying to read behind the, between the lines. I like that about you, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's adorable how you're constantly living in fear of malice. Like, yeah, that, that's, that has to be right because. Oh, it's, it's spot on. But just the way in which if that's what this is, mm -hmm. like, because it is kind of what it is. Right. But because, I assume that there were a couple other things that Hachima was attaching to this. Like, this boy is in just constant defense mode. Yep. Right, that that's, is so stressful. I'm not thick-headed, I'm thin-headed, right? right? Yeah. Because And the malice is, you know, often casual. Casual and cold, right? right? They, the, you know, yeah, not like, premeditated. Right, what's the, what was the thing that was said? Um, maybe it was, maybe it was Yui? I can't remember. But where you assume people care enough about you to hate you. No, no, that's, um, that's uh, Yukino. Oh, that was that Yukino? That. Yeah, Okay. That's at the yeah. end of the episode. Uh-huh, yeah. but because... He's gotten all this pain from previous, you know, interactions and stuff mm -hmm. where the people were just responding in the way that they wanted to respond and, you know, with no with no care or thought for his feelings. Mm -hmm. And so now he's just like, OK, well, that's that's going to happen again if I let my guard down. All right. She does the line that's for, you know, Hayama. The mm -hmm. other people who handle things flawlessly are boring. Right. And he kind of has the little response and looking down at that. God, the uh -huh. character animation in this show oh, can just be so, so good. So good. He's like, well, then I got the answer I was looking for, so I should get going. And mm -hmm. that's the whole thing with, with Yukino. So. Right. Yeah, that's fine there. And then they're left alone together. Just these two uh -huh. bakas just. I, God, that, I don't I need you looking out for me. Like, that's his response. Yeah, that's oh, his response. Oh, man. He's like, no, that wasn't my intention. I just did what I wanted to. Uh-huh. Now, I want to take him... I want to mm -hmm. take him completely seriously, right? But Hayama's thing is that every once in a while, he's just flat out lying. Or he's omitting parts well, of the truth, right? Uh, maybe. I mean, so he's... So, I think that, the... Uh-huh. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, so he said, I just did what I wanted to, right? And he said before that he is incredibly dependent on his environment, right? Yes. So what yes. I'm guessing, what I'm guessing is that because of his environment, um, his environment has changed, right? Mm -hmm. With his friends, it was kept status quo, thanks to Hachiman. Right. However, Hachiman was, became part of his environment, and he wanted Hachiman to be part of his environment. Mm -hmm. But then things got complicated, schism between the two of them. The festival. Right. Yep. So he wants things to be mended with Hachiman, right? So he relies on Hachiman in season two. Well, and to then kind of bring him a little bit more into this well, thing as well. No, I think that's something where it wasn't. It wasn't because he was. It was. I don't think it was because he wanted the connection with Hachiman to be stronger, but it was because there were all these other things in his environment that were getting threatened. Right. 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 And but then the, the, the secondary goal is right. that then he can potentially build things back up again with Hachiman. That's and why he was the one that listened in the thing that you were talking about in season two, episode one, where she's like, you're not approaching this the right way so you can head back. And he's like, okay, well, back to the drawing board. Uh, we get right. to not have the, the change happen, uh -huh. but also, yeah, he's but, sensitive right. to that. He's, he's caused harm, right? right? And yeah. so now he's like, okay, I want to actually set this straight. Right. Who cares what Hachiman wants? This sure. is what I want to do because I do actually benefit from this, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, and that and that's why Hachiman will always feel like it's some kind of like self-righteous pity or whatever. Mm -hmm. No, it's not it's not that at all. Yeah. It's not it's, it's not that at all. Yeah, it's his life in some way forces him to be as selfless as possible mm -hmm. because he believes that's the right thing to do, right. even at the expense of himself, and then, maybe. What was that line where uh, maybe it was maybe it was Hayama where it was like the isn't isn't weren't all the times where he helped people because you also wanted someone to help you too? Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's something that he definitely said, and I I recognize uh -huh. that immediately. Is like that could be true, but maybe that's um, maybe that's your thing, buddy. <sighs> Awful, I never want to do anything like that again because he isn't like hurting people in general. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have bothered then. Yeah, yeah. I just want to you know fix about how and uh, fix what I broke. I pin my hopes on you. That's why I relied on you, despite being aware of the consequences. Because of that, you. He's like, hey. He's like, you need to realize your own worth. Oh man. He just not just you, the it. people around you too. It's like, holy shit. It's easier said than done. We've gone about better, but this is all I could manage. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's perfect. The idea of him acknowledging that he can't do things perfectly—that's mm -hmm. so good. Right, because when 
especially right after Harno was like, oh, it's boring if the person can just do things perfectly all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sacrificing myself, I'm not like you. It's perfectly normal to me. Other people don't factor into what I do. <laughs> uh. How's that working out for you? How's that working out for you, Hachiman? You know, that's things you that can in front of you can do things that way. Life, but in my life alone, don't stick your nose where it doesn't belong. Don't you help people because you want someone to help you? Now, this is something. Mm -hmm. But I think that he is potentially on the, the right track with in But also some a ways. little bit of projecting. But it is a little bit or maybe a lot of projecting. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. And he just goes, not at all. Quit forcing your disgusting pity on me. Basically saying, stop projecting. Right. Uh huh. And God, then Hayama's left alone with that. <sighs> and they knocked over the bikes, yep. you know, because yep. they were frustrated yeah 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 exactly that mm -hmm. is also one of the most annoying things to get bikes uh oh yeah when they're when out the of, handlebars are in the spokes yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's so annoying it's awful yeah uh-huh <laughs> so this is the perfect thing for him to just get frustrated why uh-huh yeah yep. he says although i couldn't put into words the one thing i shared with someone else wait no 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 i had although i could put it hold on this i no. had my convictions yeah i had my convictions right yeah the one thing I shared with someone else and the one I've lost now. Right, which I believe that's Yukino. Yes, yes. Like, because if you want to talk about convictions, yeah, she, mm -hmm. she's she got those. Right. And now, hey, hmm. here you are. Here you are. Hiratsuka Sensei being like, oh, some stuff happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm guessing. Yeah. So what are you going to do about that? Right, Yukino uh, is wanting to be the, the student council president, but I haven't told anybody, so uh -huh. what are you going to do? So... You know what I love about this? Mm -hmm. Remember how I was mentioning the friend that just never recommended apathy? Uh-huh. Hiratsuka Sensei kind of reminds me of this guy in a lot of ways. Okay. Except Hiratsuka is way more of an anime character in this. Oh, she definitely. She kind of does things a bit more abruptly uh, and less subtly. Yeah, kidney yeah. punches and all that stuff, yeah. But, but the idea that she is doing the I ask the main character what they're going to do, which is a very uh -huh. cliche writing thing. Oh, yeah. This works so well here. Because what she's doing by saying it twice is saying, you're mm -hmm. going to do something about this, right? Yeah, Not it's, a thing of where you have to do this. Right. But I would strongly it's, advise. Well, it's leading the witness. It's yes. not even It's yes. not even something of, I strongly advise. It's it's incepting the idea in their head that, of course, they're going to do something, right? I'm, because, yes. But to Hachiman, he reads in between the lines, so she knows that he's going to take it as an advice thing as well. Well... Sure, but but the way it's open ended, it's also the your choice, you know, like like. But I mean, you're gonna do something, right? Right. But it is it is the what will you do, not a are you going to do something. I think is kind of the well, part right. That maybe I'm I, I think, focusing on. I think it's more something like uh, um, when I whenever whenever I would take like you know therapy sessions and things like that mm -hmm. there was always the idea of you can make any choice you want and right. choosing to not choose is a choice right and right. and that that was that was the only main thing that they would usually say is like a mm -hmm. not not advice but like just let me remind you you know mm -hmm. um yeah because whenever someone tells you to do something there's always that especially for someone like hachiman especially for someone like hachiman there will always be that rebellious side of him that's like no i'm not going to do that right mm -hmm. but if instead it's the you're in a situation that's just facts right yeah. what are you going to do and we see how yukino does things mm -hmm. in this next scene here oh. but then there's also a way that yui does things yeah yeah the fact that yeah yukino did say that line if you think everyone cares about you enough to hate you then you think far too much of yourself. You need to know your self-worth. Wow. Okay. <sighs> yeah. But okay. All right, Yui. Mm -hmm. You're going to run for it. She's going to run for president. I got to say, though, I uh -huh. thought that they were building up the whole thing of I'm going to shoot my shot. I've got something I can do. Mm -hmm. And I could actually like keep this club. Well, well I no. think actually, wait yeah. a minute. Have I been thinking about this all wrong again? Maybe. If I don't she know. confesses to Yukino, no, <laughs> that that's to native. Hachiman, yeah, yeah uh -huh. that does potentially change the entire club. Yep. And, well, so and I she think she can't under, do that, right? And I think she understands that that's kind of one of the big reasons why he keeps stiffing, stiff arming her whenever she tries because because mm -hmm. he likes it in some ways the way it was before too. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He doesn't want things to change, right? You know. So now her doing this is kind of a like, 
I'm I'm very curious how it's going to turn out with her doing this because you can know running for student council president mm-hmm. totally makes sense, right? Yeah. You know, it's the obvious choice, right? That, that was that was what you know mm-hmm. uh, Hutchman said, right? Yeah, you were doing that. Okay, that's mm-hmm. different. But the whole idea of her being able to then half ass the duties and still go to the club and stuff, I love it. Uh-huh. But now, okay, Hachiman, you are so far the only person who still hasn't decided what they're what going to do. do. So, yeah. how do you want to do this? How do you want to do this? Like, And the way he just kind of sits there as she walks on. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and he's basically going to... I, I, the fact that he was about to call her out on basically being like, don't do this selfishly. And she's like, no, 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 no. I'm no. not the one who's being selfish. You don't selfish. get to attach that to me. Yeah, you, you guys, guys are, are the being ones selfish. selfish. Uh, yep, have you thought this through? I have, yeah, yeah. I love that he didn't defend that at all. He just switches tactics. Have you uh-huh. thought this through? Yep. I mean, that he's not even really thinking necessarily about what he's saying as much as he is just kind of trying to stop her from doing this. Right. Because it's another change. Yep, uh-huh. And I love how... Uh-huh. The, Every bit of like body animation language mm-hmm. that was going on with Yui in this whole scene was so good. Like the part where she actually like um, I'm in love with this this club. I'm in love. I'm in love. And mm-hmm. her eye like her eyes like like glance away for a second. Like like god, oh my god, it's just, so good. Oh, that, that, it's so that good. So so freaking good. <sighs> and it carries forward into the next scene here where Hachiman's kind of like oh. But he's not really doing anything. And then mm-hmm. she's got tears in her eyes. Yep, yep. She like, wipes well, them away. Anyway, like, you know, I can just half ass things and yep. stuff. If, if I can know, give you case, what you want. The same, right? <sighs> yeah. We're talking about me here. Nobody's expecting anything from me. It's like, this way you want to cry. Just like, <sighs> Self-worth. God. Ah, oh, yeah. Know your worth, girl. Like, oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, oh my God. Then he and starts it, to say her full name, but she says, oh, I'll be okay from here. Goodbye. Yeah. This might be it, Jacob. The club uh-huh. might literally yep. be over I, I think, in the next episode. I think so. Because because Yukino is uh-huh. a paladin, well, might be getting betrayed here. And that's, that's why I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. Because the question remains, Hachiman, what are you, what are you gonna do? Because he might do nothing. He might do nothing. He might do, he nothing. Might do nothing. Every bit oh. of his characterization up till now is that he will do nothing. But here's the thing. Hachiman oh my God. is on a journey. Uh-huh. He's on a journey. And this might be the time where he finally decides, right? And this is why. This is why uh. I will continue to, to, to stand for the Yui ship until mm. the end of time. Because Mm -hmm. this kind of process, this kind of thing of that, nope, I'll be good from here on out. Mm -hmm. This has needed to happen. Well, this is good for Yui. This This has nothing to do with their romance. No, 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 totally, totally, right. Right. But this is good for Yui, right? Right. It's something that definitely needs to happen. Hachiman needs to have his own equivalent thing. Exactly. And and I think this might be setting it up. It might be pitching the ball up for this I want it, though, with Hayama. With what Hayama did this episode, oh, sure. I think his yeah. actual like best thing he could do here, best thing he could do uh-huh. personally, is acknowledge that he doesn't have the equipment in order to handle this. He is in tepid, strange waters right now, uh, and he's just going to go to Hayama. Have the service club ask for help. And basically be like, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what to do. Oh, but man, I don't that... think he would do that with Hayama. No, no. The person who it actually makes the most sense for him to do this with, weirdly enough, is Hiratsuka I was thinking or that Kamachi. Too. But Kamachi, Maybe I don't feel like... No, 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 no. <laughs> if he wanted to make a deal with the devil. like No, no, no. I think he cannot stand being with Haruno because yeah. she reminds him of him so sure, much. Sure, and she has too much of an agenda all the time. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. Like, she's just better at him. At, yeah, like, yeah. Hey, I'm you, but better. I'll beat you at your own game. And, right. and you you won't flatter yourself. I can play, too. You have never been a player when it comes to playing no, against well, me. No, like, no, no. I think his observational skills might be better than hers at times. But that's just because he's in his environment. She's actually sure. in this. She's learning the environment. She's like, yeah. ooh, this Sussing stuff out goes the territory. Here. This yeah, yeah. goes here. That's that's mm-hmm. why I like I love and hate her so much. Is oh, that right. she's she makes things she more here? interesting. Right, like, right, right. Like in the role in the story, she makes things mm-hmm. more interesting. 
But the fact that she's a college age student or whatever from a super wealthy family and all that stuff going like, around and meddling with high schoolers would have like with right. nothing to do directly with her sister or family <laughs> no. it feels super creepy to, no, just, no. to so, just to me a, so this is what way. it is it, yeah. she's she's used to smooching with the social elite right okay so it's the we could rule them like gods angry gods you oh. know like going to the low level place where she's like oh yeah, yeah. i I can I can make them dance right. on my strings however I want. Possibly. I think the reason why is more that she's just interested in Hachiman. Well, and that's really the only reason why she's here. Otherwise she'd be like, "Uh no, I already do enough to push my sister in certain directions." I think I think too. It's because she's okay. interested in Hachiman and she cares about Yukino. And yes, Yukino yeah. and Yukino is interested in Hachiman. Yes. So it's the so and she's the, not dumb. She right, can she's, see that. She's not dumb. She can see that. Yeah. And that does not happen often. Mm. Right? Because the whole thing of the one thing I shared mm. with someone else, the convictions. Yeah. Yeah. How mm. much do you think that happens for Yukino? Mm. Never. 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 That's why the beginning of the show is so important, really. Right. Just yeah. it shows, really, where mm -hmm. their foundation and relationship in general can grow yep. if they get over themselves right. and uh, learn their own individual self -worth Meanwhile, you and you keep them. being your yep. awesome you, self. You, I want you to go and grow as much as you possibly want. Just just, uh -huh. just go. Yep. yep. Fly. And if Hachiman doesn't end up being a part of that, that's that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But assuming that mm -hmm. he, you know, grows and all of that stuff and whatnot, yeah. that ends up that ends up Aligning. happening. Like I, I really think that it it's either going to end up in a thing of where he he doesn't mm -hmm. end up with anyone, or it's just a thing of where it's it's not that kind uh -huh. of a show where they they leave that kind of relationship stuff more towards like the sure when we're adults kind of thing. One of the things that I also want to just point out mm -hmm. that I can't believe I haven't pointed this out before, mm -hmm. but. I've mentioned jokes at, at points of like, ah, Yui has the short hair. She's the short-haired bubbly girl, so therefore she yes. can't have a happy ending, right? Uh -huh. um, one of the things that is really tough to do when you get into love triangle territory, oh. how do you make it like a, to be a satisfying resolution for the person who doesn't end up in the relationship, sure. right? Because since the competition yeah. is all about who ends up with who, and you have one character essentially losing, oh. how do you make it so that actually feels like a win for them? So that that way you can be you can be in all well, the camps being cheering for someone everybody. Else, Harry Potter. <laughs> Oh, just oh, saying. Boy. Just saying. Um, but since Yui's growth so far in her journey so far, she is absolutely like killing it. She is slaying it, girl. Mm -hmm. If she doesn't end up with Hachiman, like if it continues like this, I will still be sad, but at the same time, I'll be totally fine with that yeah. because just remember, girl, you're doing great. Yes. Like, but just remember, this is not a good sign for her. She is not doing this because she has a lot of self worth right now. She is doing this for Hachiman. Yeah. And that's the thing that sucks about this, is that hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully she doesn't get hurt too much by this. But this is another way in which, in mm -hmm. if it doesn't lead to dramatic consequences for the club, she might not learn from the mistake of this for I a think, while. I think because she's so much less stubborn than a lot of the other characters, I, I do think she'll get hurt, but I think it's something where she'll be able to roll with the hurt. Oh, which just everyone's so young in this story. Yep. There's just a lot of ways in which I recognize certain circumstances and scenarios uh -huh. to where I'm like, oh, that I remember that. I never got oh, yeah. over that. Like, <laughs> like, 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 like that kind of stuff where I'm like, mm -hmm. no, that got integrated into my DNA and my life. Right. And then I adjusted accordingly. Yeah. But I never like changed my mind yeah. about that. It's the whole that thing got of, ironed in. Right. People say Ugh. people call it character or whatever, but it's like those people that like grow the trees and you have to actually torture and twist and bend the trees in order to make them grow in a particular way. And when it's all said <laughs> and done, wrong. you might be like, that's wonderful. But no no no. The the tree didn't recover from those things that happened to it. It just it just grew a different way. It grew a different way. Yeah. Now there's nothing right or wrong in any of that. It's sure. just the idea that's just that, life, you know. Yeah, that's life. But that's also the thing of where we can definitely say that it was painful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, life is pain, Highness. Yeah.
yeah. thing that says definitely is selling something. Yep. But, but what okay. a wonderful episode. We talked about that for a long time. I really do think that this show deserves, though, it like a, a discussion of this nature because one... Just to understand it. Well, one, yeah, I definitely don't understand all the character dynamics and motivations mm -hmm. at any given time. Yeah, but, we could totally be wrong about the whole Hayama contacting Haruno for the, you know, right, all that. Right, but I could definitely feel in this discussion for me that I was off base about 50% of the time, like... Minimum, but just like life, it's a journey. It's a journey, and we're yep. discovering these characters, and I'm growing yep. to fall in love. But I'm falling in love with them more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And and you Hi go, Emma. Yui. Hi Emma. And yeah, Hi Emma. You're my MVP. This Man, episode, you for you sure. really were. You really were. You were yeah. awesome. You were an absolute Chad. Ugh. And. Ugh. Man. Man, I really hope that the the Kaori mm -hmm. and Chika duo doesn't just leave the story now, though. Oh, uh huh. I feel like that would be a huge well, waste of potential with what they just did here. Especially since that, even though Yui and Yukino left shortly after that whole interaction, they did see what happened there. So if they start to learn more about the situation, Ka Kaori then... noticed immediately that Yui likes Hachiman. Yes, she mm -hmm. did. She yep. did. She definitely did. Yep. But that's also something where then maybe. Yui and Yukino can start to know where Hachiman's coming from, and then maybe then they can also potentially address it with Hachiman or something. Because the fact I, I I will I will keep saying this: the fact that Orimoto was brought back into the story bodes well for Hachiman. It does eventually. Eventually, you know, it will be <laughs> yeah. painful, right? Because damn it, he's he's dug his roots deep into growing but this hey, way. He learned but something here in the movie theater. He did. It was this thing of like, yep. oh, this is just how she is with everyone. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm getting closure on something that right. Yeah, I totally forgot to get mm -hmm. closure on. And if those wounds are closing up, then maybe that means you'll be less sensitive when things start mm -hmm. to happen in a similar area that actually could be positive. Speak it loud, brother. Speak it loud from the rooftop, brother. <laughs> oh my God, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get an early access there. You can watch full-length timer reactions there, and all this comes with Discord access. You can chat with us in the community there about this show, about anime in general, and also be sure to check out our Twitch channel. Yes, all the info for that is in the description below. Yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jake. And we'll see you all next time. time.